read a little bit more and very, very far north. And I just like reading. It's so interesting because I always had a We are the Falco family. Brian, Serena, Cameron, Kendall, and Savannah. A family of filmmakers exploring the truth about education. Learning to document our adventures in homeschool and life and tell stories of how we live and what we learn. Welcome back and welcome to our channel. It's Serena from the Falco family where we make videos about education and lifestyle. Today I'm back with another book haul, friends, and I'm just going to work my way through what is on our shelves. If you see something that has been on your list, let us know. If you've read anything, let us know. First book that I have is While I Was Away. Um, this is by Waka T. Brown. When Waka's mother suspects her 12-year-old daughter can't understand basic Japanese, she makes a drastic decision to ship Waka to Tokyo to live with her strict grandmother and reconnect with the culture and master the language. Goodbye, friends. End of sixth grade parties and fun, and goodbye, summer vacation. So plucked from her straight-A student life in rural Kansas and sent halfway across the globe where her reading levels are embarrassingly low. Waka embarks on what feels like the hardest five months of her life, learning an incredibly complicated writing system, dealing with the social politics of classmates who think she's illiterate, and attempting to understand her complicated Obasama. Even though this is the country her parents came from, Waka has never felt more like an outsider. I've really been trying to increase our Japanese literature section of our Asian literature on our shelves um, and this is one that I'm really looking forward to reading with um, or alongside the kids. The next one I have is We Dream of Space. This is another one by one of our favorites Erin Entrada Kelly. Definitely was a cover buy for me in the beginning before we started to get into Erin Entrada Kelly's work. Um, so I definitely thought there would be a lot more space involved in this story and it turns out it wasn't quite. It's a very complex, complicated family story with some heavy family dynamic that I found a way to tap into with the kids, which I can talk well with my oldest, who is the one who read this so far. So he's got a lot of doggy-eared, tabbed spaces here. A story about siblings in Park, Delaware. Cash loves basketball, but has a newly broken wrist. He's in danger of failing the seventh grade for the first for the second time, Fitch, who spends every afternoon playing Major Havoc at the arcade and wrestles with an explosive temper that he doesn't understand. And Bird, Fitch's 12-year-old twin, who wants to be NASA's first female shuttle commander, but feels like she's invisible. So they live in the same house, but exist in their own orbits, dreaming of hope, dreaming of belonging, dreaming of friendship, dreaming of family, dreaming of space. So we definitely kind of recapped as he read along in that book and just kind of talked through some of the complicated family dynamics that were inside of it, but I'm excited to read it in its entirety and be able to have more conversation about it. So this one is The Blackbird Girls. This is a historical fiction. A disaster changes their lives, a friendship that lasts a lifetime. I feel like that's all I need to know, <laughs> but I'll read a little bit more. So on a spring morning, neighbors Valentina Kaplan and Oksana Sevenchenko wake up to an angry red sky. A reactor at the nuclear power plant where their fathers work, Chernobyl, has exploded. Before they know it, the two girls, who've always been enemies, find themselves on a train to stay with Valentina's estranged grandmother. In their new lives, they begin to learn what it means to trust another person. She must face the lies that her parents told her all her life, and Valentina must keep her grandmother's secret, one that could put all of their lives in danger. And both of them discover something they've wished for, a best friend. But how far are you willing to go to save your best friend's life? Would you risk your own? So this is told in alternate perspectives among three girls. This story shows that hatred, intolerance, and oppression are no match for the power of true friendship. The next one I have is another one of our collection of Pam Munoz Ryan, who's another favorite of ours, uh, the author of Esperanza Rising and The Dreamer, both of which he has read. Uh, so this book was a little interesting. I actually didn't really know what it was about for the longest, but now it's starting to make more sense because we are currently reading it all together. Um, my oldest has read it already, and now we're reading it together as a read aloud, and it has an incredible 
um, audiobook so far. So Lost and Alone in a Forbidden Forest, um, Otto meets three mysterious sisters and suddenly finds himself entwined in a puzzling quest involving a prophecy, a promise, and a harmonica. So decades later, Friedrich in Germany, Mike in Pennsylvania, and Ivy in California each in turn become interwoven with the very same harmonica um, that lands in their lives. All the children are facing daunting challenges, um, rescuing a father, protecting a brother, holding a family together, and ultimately pulled by the thread of destiny, their suspenseful solo stories converge in an orchestral crescendo. Masterfully crafted, Echo pushes the boundaries of genre and form and shows us what is possible in how we tell stories. So, um, so far, I'm really enjoying it, and I'm really chiming into that last part a lot, because as writers, the kids, this is these are part of our writing years right now. And we're really kind of learning more about genres and how, you know, stories fit into certain genres. And I really like that this is kind of pushing those boundaries, like it says, so that we can rethink or reimagine the way that we tell stories. So loving this so far. And I'll give you a full recap later on once we have finished it up. So every now and then when I'm out book shopping, if I find something that is just ridiculously low price, I pick it up in hopes that we will be able to pick it up in the future. I also really like, even if it's not like a rich story that everybody ends up loving, I really like to have books like these on the shelves um, just to be easier to like pluck from and like annotate to your heart's desire you know just being able to use passages and like um and mark them up with all the pins and all the markers and all the highlighters i feel like uh books like this are really helpful in that sense um useful in that sense if that makes any sense at all but this one is close to the wind i think it might be a historical fiction or contemporary let me see a war-torn country only one way out. Ten-year-old Malik's world is falling apart. Soldiers have invaded the town and his mother is missing, leaving Malik with his grandfather, Papa. Along with a thousand other refugees, their hope for escape to a new life lies in gaining passage aboard one ship. But the demand for tickets is high and so is the cost. Can they make it on? Will they find Mama before the ship departs? When things don't go as planned, Malik must summon all of his courage and resourcefulness to survive. So I don't know if it's um, set during a specific time or not. So we shall see if it's actually historical fiction or not. I don't know. This one is close to the wind. All right, next up I have a couple of chapter books, I guess you could call them. These are some of Savannah's favorites, which we love. Just really sweet stories. I only have two in this series, this collection of books. This is... I think this is the first book, Heartwood Hotel, A True Home. She's read these a few times by Callie George. Mona the Mouse stumbles across the wondrous world of the Heartwood Hotel in the middle of a storm. She desperately hopes the staff will let her stay. As it turns out, Mona is precisely the maid that they need at the grandest hotel in Fernwood Forest, where animals come from far and wide for safety, luxury, and comfort. But it's not all acorn souffle and soft moss lined, bed, lined beds. Danger lurks nearby, and as it approaches, Mona has to use all her wits to protect the place she's come to love, because this hotel is more than a warm shelter for the night. It might also be a home. So these are sweet stories. We do have this one, A True Home, and then we also have Heartwood Hotel, The Greatest Gift. I think there's two more in this series that we are looking forward to adding to our library and would love to be able to get the hardcovers of these books and then the next one I have um, the very very far north and then just beyond the very very far north so let's go back to this one cute little cast of characters they're so so cute if someday you wander north truly north to the northern part of north and you come across the cold cold ocean follow its shoreline to a beach that's just right for napping there you'll find Dwayne, the polar bear and his friends Dwayne might offer you a treat before introducing you to Cece, the owl handsome the musk ox twitch the arctic hare boo the caribou and major puff the puffin 
The puffin is my favorite. <laughs> He might, he might ask your opinion on mid-late morning naps and late mid-afternoon naps. Don't worry about the fact that Duane is a polar bear. He only has kindness in his heart, which is why his friends love him so. But if you're not able to visit Duane and his friends anytime soon, then the story tucked gently between the pages of this book should tide you over until you are ready for your own great adventure to the very, very far north. This story is so sweet and so is its sequel. Okay, so next up, I just have two, two additions to my devotion um, collection. I have Indescribable 100 Devotions About God and Science. We love this devotion, and actually, we have gone through it at least three or four times. Um, and then I just recently added to the collection, I think this might be the second book. There's like two more books, and I think this one is the second one. So we are currently working our way through this one. Um, the Wonder of Creation, 100 More Devotions About God and Science, and then I think there's one more that I'll probably haul in, in another video. They are short. They're short and sweet devotions really centered around science that you can then take off into a whole different direction to dive in more about that specific scientific topic. I also really like that they are sorted and separated by like topics, specific topics in the front, which can be really, really helpful. All right, next up, I do have one adult fiction. Y'all know I'm trying to work on that. Uh, this one is The Map of Salt, The Map of Salt and Stars. Um, the summer of 2011, just after Nora loses her father, her mother moves her and her sisters from New York City back to Syria to be closer to their family. In order to keep their father's spirit alive, um, Nora tells herself their favorite story, the story of a 12th century girl who disguised herself as a boy in order to apprentice herself to a famous map maker. But um, when a shell destroys her house, she and her family are forced to flee across seven countries of the Middle East and North Africa in search of safety. The story of one girl inspired by the legend of another and learning that if you listen to your own voice, some things can never be lost. Map of salt and stars. Okay, next up I do have a little stack of resource books. You know I like to toss these in from time to time. These are the DK Smithsonian Super Simple Collection. I do have Super Simple Biology, Super Simple um, Physics, Math, and I have Super Simple Chemistry. There might be one more in the collection, even though I thought I had them all. So there may be either one more or this is all of them. I really like these books. I like how simple they lay out concepts. And again, this is along the lines of the everything you need to know to ace type of resources, something you can pull from somewhat of an encyclopedia of sorts, sorted by topic. So I really like having these as a part of our homeschool library. Okay, we're getting there guys. The next one I have is this box set of classics. I have Heidi. Heidi looked around with growing delight at the mountain peaks she knew so well and which seemed to greet her like old friends. I don't think I've ever read any of these in their entirety, so I am excited to read through them. A Little Princess. It would be easy to be a princess if I were dressed in cloth of gold, but it is a great deal more of a triumph to be one all the time when no one knows it. I really like going into these for myself. I get that people like to review them and say how they felt about them, but you guys know how I feel about reading and how it has to do very much so with that individual, the um, space that they're in, their heart position that they're in when they're reading it. There's a whole bunch of different things that go into whether or not you enjoy a book, whether or not you appreciate a book, and all of the reasons why you would rate it the way you would rate it. So I'm really excited to go into these. Then the next one I have, um, which I'm sure will probably be my favorite, but I don't know, let me not say it, is Anne of Green Gables. I'm really excited to be able to read through this with the kids, and we're probably going to do that somewhere around the summer. Little Women. Um, life and love are very precious when both are in full bloom. I'm really on purpose not going over what these books are about because like I said, I really enjoyed not really knowing. <laughs> so that's really helpful to me because I feel like if I if I um, really pay attention to other people's summaries or synapses, my brain already starts to imagine what it would like to receive from the book. And I just like reading from page to page and I think it makes it more exciting and it opens your mind up to 
um, what you're going to be reading. So picture books. Um, first up, I have Langston Hughes Poetry for young people. I really want to own a collection of all things like Harlem Renaissance era, and I'm excited to add this one to our collection. It's so interesting because I always had a pull to his work um, when I was younger, but it would have been nice to have um, teachers that were able to like dive in and explain uh, and give you different context for people's work and people's writing. So I'm excited to be able to do that on their level, which I don't love to say because levels are such a fluid thing, but I'm excited to have this as a part of our collection. Next up I have Voices from the Underground Railroad by Kay Winters, illustrated by Larry Day. Um, it's 1861 and two siblings are about to risk their lives to escape slavery. And this one is Robert Frost, The Road Not Taken, Two Roads Diverged in a Yellow Wood. I like having books like this in our collection. It's just a nice introduction. So by the time you get around to really getting into um, heavier literature or poetry, you would have at least had a taste of it, which really helps you to um, wrap your mind around the different types of literature and poetry, if that makes any kind of sense. So I'm excited to have this one and it's beautiful. Have you read any of these? Or talk to us in the comments about all the bookish things, friends. Thank you so much for watching. Remember that life is so very full of lessons and our goal as always is to live and to learn. Bye. Don't forget to subscribe.